Yo, 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 welcome to Sports of Street Talk, Season 3, Episode 8. Today we're going to be talking about free agents, but I'm one of your hosts, Josh Portis. I'm Rob Gordon. And I'm Rob Jones. And, and people, what, what do we mean by what, what free agents? Can we talk about free agent biz, business? Can we talk about free agents in sports? Uh, can we talk about free agents in, you know, in relationships? I mean, we can go on very di- different meanings of free agents, man. And, and we're going to very elaborate on this topic just because it can compl- apply in so many different uh, situations in life. But, uh, Rock, you know, Rob, man, what's your takes on it? Man, well, you know, I think it, it works in every aspect of life, to be honest. You know, when it comes down to free agents, you know, you could think about it in relationships, business. We always have to be taking things to the next level. We have to have a GM's mentality in life. You know, we have to be scouting for that new talent that's going to help take our organization, our company, you know, our game to the next level. And that's So, so you're saying that all the time you should be always scouting for something new? Nope. No question. You have to be on your network game. The minute you step out this place right here, you can meet somebody that could take you to the next level. Right. But you got you you have to be on top of your your game. Okay, so let's talk uh let's talk relationships. So you think that let's just say you're in a relationship, you happy, right? Uh huh. Do you think you should always be looking for your next situation? Because that could potentially mess up your current situation. Right, right, right. Well, Here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, once you become a free agent, you feel me? I got you. So you, you you're All talking right. about me personally. So once I become a free agent, that's just one door closing, open opening the door to something new and better. Okay, I understand. You that. know, I get that. I get that. You know, I'm I'm gonna take it to the next level with my next relationship because I don't learn so much from the past. You feel me? I just, they just let me go, they or I let, let them go. go. They you just know? let you go. Oh, I let them go. They just let you go, huh? Oh, I let them go. One of one of the other. One of the other. Okay. You so know? let's talk free agents and uh, business. So, you, what do y'all think about free agents and business? Like, what does that what does that look like to y'all? We need to find people that's gonna help your business grow. You need okay. to find somebody who, you know, what I'm saying maybe you don't have the strengths of everything, and maybe you're looking at your team and you're like, yo, yo, we need. We need a better producer, you know what I'm saying? We need somebody, we need a better director. And the minute you step out and you network and you take your time out and say, okay, well now I have options of different people that could help elevate my game. And you just have to, you have to find that equal balance and, and what makes sense for your company. You know, NFL teams, they do it all the time. They, they look for these free agents and it, it'll be the top free agents but it may not necessarily fit, fit their scheme. Yeah, that's it, true. It may just be good for the brand, the marketing, and it may bring more money to the organization, but it might not fit the team. So y'all think that being a free agent or the thought process or the mentality of being a free agent should apply to everything in life, essentially? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm, not saying I, I'm opposed to it. I'm just saying that it's a, it's a, it's a, good, oh. it's a good frame of thinking. Okay, well, what you think then, Rob G? Honestly, you know, when it comes to life and free agents from business to relationships to um i would even say brand deals like you said it's got to be it's got to be a perfect fit like when you when when a team is searching for a free agent it's got to fit the scheme it's got to fit the it's got to fit the 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 personnel it's got to fit the persona of the players that you already have on your team and if it doesn't fit then it got to go so to me it's like in business right if i'm looking for a new Mm -hmm. business partner this particular person might not might not do business the way that I do business. This person might might be a person that comes in and goes to meetings late. This person might be a person that um, doesn't answer or respond to emails well or doesn't take constructive criticism. So if, if you're not in that mind frame that I need you to be in in order to be productive in business, it's just not going to work. So we just don't start. We never start. You know what I'm saying? So you don't. I don't sign them onto the contract or we don't continue to move forward in business. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Or Or creative differences you know what i'm saying like it, that's that's what happens the player gets cut now you're a free agent so you back out trying to figure out your situation or your next business deal or relationship or right, right partnership i personally think that we have to we have to actually think about the pros and the cons in every relationship any relationship me? so you know what i'm saying even though you may have to let this guy go and you may get another guy back. You have to determine 
how is that guy going to elevate the game? And what am I losing? Losing the other guy. Or in, in business, in sports, in every aspect of life. I yeah. think it's always a balance. You, you know, know what I mean? I think life is about uh, is about balance and it's a balancing act. It's just like what, know, what huh? like what happens in relationships when we think about it? You know what I'm saying? What you mean? So, like think about as, like what way? Soon as we move on to the next relationship, then right. we start evaluating past relationships based on this individual's capabilities or, or I, what? I think you should but see that like that's not I, I disagree with that because I feel like you should always evaluate the relationship before you get into another relationship you should always do checks and balances on what you did like and what you didn't like what were your takeaways your pros and your cons on the last situation because if you don't you won't repeat the same stuff that you went through the last relationship you didn't grow in a sense that's I how can, I, feel. I mean personally I, I can dig that you know what I mean but at, at the same time you got to think about now that you're in a new relationship, you have to go step by step learning, you know, learning how to deal with the individual, learning, you know, the different yeah. ebbs and flows of the relationship, how this person operates with this temperament opposed to my last relationship. Yeah, I mean, it's a learning curve to everybody, especially in relationships. It's a learning curve. You got to get get with somebody and learn them. In a, in a business relationship, you got to get with somebody and learn them. Partnership, get with somebody and learn them. On a team, you got to get with the team. You got to learn the playbook. It's the same thing. You got. It's a learning curve, but I still think you still got to take that that time from past to, to, to present to make that check and balances, you know, just to kind of figure out what did you like and what did you not like. I'm going to take it one step further. So when y'all talk about free agents, you know what I'm saying? It's always about, you know, connecting everything to the right fit. So the com component of being a free agent in sports, it, it's it's a lot harder to find that fit just because it has a lot of more uh, moving parts. Meaning that moving parts, meaning that you got to deal with the organization, you got to deal with coaches, and you got to deal with players. So hmm. it's a harder fit. Finding a relationship is a lot is harder too as well. But you know, it can it can get easier depending on what you want. But finding that right Pacific woman, finding that right woman as you know, for you can be hard too. So, I mean, when you look at it, like being a free agent, anything and finding that right fit on what works for you is hard just because one spot of a free agent might have so many moving parts to find that fit. One moving part of a, a relationship, with one single person might find that fit because we all know men and female are a lot of different you know they have a lot some, what, some so like so like say for example you talk you know about what I'm relationship saying? i get it but let's just you say you talk about saying? relationship right mm -hmm. and let's let's base it and compare it to a team right so you you saying it's it's easy to be in a relationship because you're only dealing with one, one person, person. Well, on a football team you got coaches players and gms it's but more here, it's more moving parts to it but it's that, moving parts to, your, to that free agent hold relationship on, hold on, but it's free agent it's moving parts to your relationship too because you got your mama you got your grandmama you got your boys you got her friends. You got her parents. So it's honestly, it's, yeah. it's kind of similar. Yeah, but. It's similar in that way in the sense of, like, you still got people that you got to get along with. Yeah, it's not 22-man 22, 22 roster how, and a GM and, a, and, a, and an but, owner, but you got a, you got a mama, you got a daddy, you your right, friends, you and right. her friends. But it's, also, her but it's also how that man courts that relationship, too, though. Too, though. Yeah, I mean, too. So that, you can, you and, can and she might have all kids. that different thing. <laughs> you can, so it's, 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 you, it's equally as complex. You can, you can, you can, you can court it, you can court it a little bit around that, but I get it. Like, obviously, if you're dealing with somebody, you're gonna have to be dealing with multiples of that person. It's that's multiple personality person. types. So it's more a lot more moving parts because people are in it. Like, hey, girl, what you doing with him? Like, you know, a lot of people in her ear. You know what I'm saying? Just like a lot of people are like, hey, OBJ, come to LA, or hey, OBJ, come to Green Bay, or like, hey, LeBron, come here. You know what I mean? It's a lot, of, a lot more moving parts than what we think it is. For but sure. It's a, it's a, it's kind of clarity if you visualize it like a free agent of finding a relationship, a free agent of find, uh, you know, on a team is a lot more moving comp components than what you think it is. I think it's all based on the player or the person or yeah. player, person, player, yeah. same thing. I think you just gotta, um, you gotta make the decision what's best for you. I think right. it all boils down to choices and decisions, like anything in life. Right? Absolutely, it's, it's about your choice and your decision and how it benefits you best, right? So somebody that might benefit a Josh or a Rob is not going to benefit a benefit of Rob because we might be looking for different things. You might you might need a woman to rub your back. No I question. might want a woman to rub my feet. You know what I'm saying? Like right. it's just I'm just you know whatever it is. Like everybody has specific things that they looking for. Like um, you might be looking for short term hookups yeah you know what i'm saying quick mm -hmm. little ass and ass and dash you know what i mean i might be looking for a long-term situation mary right. and carrie you know what i'm saying so it's just a, it's just you, you don't know what, what what's gonna happen mary or what, you know what's 
you know, little, little robism. You know what I mean? Um, little Gordonism for y'all. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, uh, uh, it's just you gotta figure out, man. What's what's Mary and Carrie, <laughs> dog? Because you got to carry it with yeah, you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it is. I mean, you you right though. It's what it's what fits you. What fits your game? What fits your organization? What fits your company? How you're trying to grow with them? You know, it, a lot of times we we are willing to change for for who the, who it is who it is you know that's like the player based on right based on the upside of things based on the way that you know maybe the dollar amount is more yeah maybe the the, the female's just a little prettier yeah I, th- I, I like the analogy you know what i'm yeah. saying a, a a free agent in the sports world as a pair as opposed to a free agent in the relationship <laughs> world. i like that that's some deep shit. Yeah, i don't that's know what you niggas came up with that but that's Rock, that's me oh my that's god me. that's yeah, me that's me i ain't gonna me. lie that's me it is me because even 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 like like you said like you know the, the business i love the business but like even in the business world man like as an entrepreneur, you just a natural free agent, right? And so whatever you, you, yeah. you whatever you stick your hooks into next, that's your business and that's your team. And then yeah. you grow it from there. You yeah. grow the organization and the franchise from scratch and you build it and you know, you see how it is, or you might go buy a team or, or you know, a business and that's your new franchise and you gotta go in and, and get a new gym and rebuild the team. So I think the analogy is is, is on point. Um I'm gonna give you one 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 more though. Go ahead. You know. And I know y'all probably heard this saying before. Go ahead, here we go. Every single day, you have to lay a brick. Okay. You can't build the wall all in one day. You know what I'm saying? So that's when it comes down to your relationships. Every single day, just lay a brick. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, you'll build the wall. Same thing in your company, organization, or wherever you go. You gotta lay one brick at a time. You feel? Me? So you- Lay Same. one brick at a time. Lay one brick at a time. I think that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that's bullshit. I'm just gonna well, say it. Well, why say is it bullshit, bro? No, I'm just messing with you, bro. Oh, okay, I'm okay. just messing with you. I think that, I think that's a valid point. Yeah. Um, it's a valid point. 100%. Yeah. Like it's like taking one step, or or you heard the, the same phrase or analogy. Uh, if you want to go on a road trip and wait for the, the first light to go green, you'll never start. Same type of thing. Oh, I never heard that. You never heard that one. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, that, that's one of my favorites. Or, or uh, in a in a journey of a thousand miles, you'll never yeah. get to the end if without the first step. It's the, yeah. all all of them right, right. all of the analogies are the same. Right, right. right. Um, but no, I, y'all I, jot that down too. All these analogies. Yeah, yeah, we they, be, they're good. We be dropping them, don't? We? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one y'all brick be, at a time. Yeah, y'all better check. One it. brick in the right. <laughs> Somebody got to do it. Like <laughs> what, nigga? <laughs> real tough. Real yeah, tough. But, um, man, I think it's a I think it's a great topic. I think, um, like I said, free agents in, in, in business relationships, relationships. I mean, it's all in it's all in what you want, man. It's all in what you what you seek, and I think the best way to do it for real. And a lot of times, people out here dating, man, without without understanding themselves what they want. You know what I mean? Like it was important. One of my OGs, he sat me down. He said, "Bruh," and I was going through like a lot of little little stuff or whatever. He was like, "You got to know what you want," and I was like, "Man, what you talking about?" He was like, man. "You ever wrote a list?" Like man, what you, man? What is you talking about, man? He like you wrote, ever wrote a list of the things that you want, like your dream girl. You ever built your dream girl on paper? Like what is it, look like? <laughs> right? And you know that thing sound crazy, right? It sound crazy, but it's almost equivalent to writing your goals down, right? So Woo! like, if you got a goal, you put it, you put it down, and then you put a plan to it. It becomes a reality. It's the same right. thing with what your idea of what a relationship is if you write down what your thought process is of this ideal person and then you start to you know have those qualities because you got to have them qualities too you can't be like oh man in the gym and you ain't working out like mm-hmm. how, how you gonna track the mother in the gym and you ain't went to the gym right right, right. But you gotta no have question. the quality you gotta write the qualities down and then have and exemplify those qualities and once you do i mean you know you know how that thing worked that yeah yeah, yeah. Thing worked. so here, here's here's, track. Yeah. here's what i want to do i want us all to come up with some examples of when, once when we were free agents and we were the salt you feel me say that uh, again so just come you know sometimes you get real atlanta nah just, just think of a time uh-huh where you was you was the salt free agent. Like, okay, you was, you was a salt after free agent? Yeah, right. salt after. Okay. Yeah. 
So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and start it off. You know, I just recently got a cannabis cultivator's license. Mm -hmm. Now, as I started passing the information out about me getting a cannabis cultivator license, the phone started ringing. Of course it did. It started ringing, 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 yeah. ringing. The Valuable. Next, now, you know what I'm saying? They're like, okay, well, we got Rock. He's this master grower. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who don't know me, I'm 10 plus years in the game. I do this shit. But, um. Talk your shit, Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for sure. That's, that, it's that way. So now I have to make a decision. What's best for me? Do I want 10,000 square feet? Right. Do I want 20,000 square feet? Right. Or do I want 120 fucking acres? Sounds like 120 acres to me. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know. That's what it sounded like to me. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? I put, I put myself out there. I did the sacrifice. You got to be willing to sacrifice your present for your future people. That's, that's for real, you know. So I was willing to sacrifice everything that I had. I dropped everything yeah. and moved to Oklahoma. Right. I sold the farm mm -hmm. to move to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So that I could do it the legal way. You know what I'm saying? I'm creating generational wealth just from being just hearsay. You know, they have, don't nobody, ain't nobody seen all your work. You know what I'm saying? Never. But when, when you create a whole story about yourself and you create, you know what I'm saying, business relationships, mm -hmm. they're going to continue to talk. And they, yeah. they, they, want, they want you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So thank God for the opportunity. I'm grateful for it. But that's my story. That's you know. that's your time. You was you uh you was a free agent and you made some choices and decisions. Yeah. What's one that you made? Choices and decisions when you was a free agent. Free agent. You could talk football, you could talk life. Let's talk football. Free agent football, man. Uh let's say um two thousand and ten, I believe. Okay. 2010. When you first got in the league? Yeah, let's go back. You know, I would say 12 years ago. And, um, you know, I was sitting in a hotel room in New York <clears throat> thinking I was going to get drafted. Right. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I crushed the compound, ran four or five, had the highest vertical uh, in NFL history for quarterbacks by the combine, by the way, 41 and a half inch vertical. It's the NFL record at the NFL combine. It's never really talked about, but it is a record. Got the highest vertical jump. Um, crushed the shuttle. Don't, ju um, don't just move past that. Hell yeah, yeah you, JP. You, you, you <laughs> stand in that, stand in that, Joshua. Right, stand in that. Yeah. <laughs> highest your, vertical talk jump. Um, right, right. Talk your shit. Yeah, Forty-one and a half inch vertical, man. Yes, you got the sir. highest vertical NFL record. That's big in, uh, in history. Period. Ain't nobody deal higher than that. Yeah, there's um, a lot of short guys out there. You know what I'm saying? But know, go ahead. I brought a ten-eight. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I did it. You know, my three cone was you know very fast, and my you know my twenty yard shuttle was very efficient. Can't remember those numbers off the top of my head, so I'm not gonna re you know uh, rehash, but go ahead. rehash on them. Uh, but other than that, man, I went out there at the combine, did my thing. I thought I was gonna you know at least get mid third round, fourth round. You know, I understand I played Division two, finished out my career Division two, but you gotta understand and look at the numbers and how I dominated the sport, dominated the position when seventy two touchdowns, only ten interceptions in two years is ridiculous. You know Ooh, what I'm saying? Wait. So that's almost on seven thousand yards passing, seven two Sweet. touchdowns, ten interceptions, and you know it, it was it was mind boggling how you know one little incident can really change the perception of somebody, especially you know during the decades of the 2010 areas when that weren't really that many black quarterbacks. But I didn't really look at it through the color of my skin. I just looked at it through like, all right, is this guy really better than me, or is I'm you know better than him? And I, and I was really fair about my judgment or my opinion. Still to this day, man, <clears throat> um, I come out of the the hotel room, and my is me and my mom, and uh, uh, the college house that I was on the farm, and uh, D. Jones contested this. I left the stove on on, and I left, it, and it burnt down. So, so my college little little the house was like just went to pieces it was like on a river or whatever but i had house insurance they took care of it all but you know you know it's a liability issue but everything was good so all my stuff was burnt up so all i had was like a ford explorer suitcase i remember that ford explorer yeah when it was like on some rims and i put those rims you know 
on my college fund and you know i thought i was you know doing whatever in college and you know whatever you know being young and dumb at the time but that's all i had was a suitcase you know my body mm. and a truck mm. and my agent at the time uh, uh ray burnell and, and jr rick and peter schaefer peter schaefer still represents a lot of guys in the league now um he was very, uh, you know, demanding that, you know, like you don't get an opportunity. So, you know, I didn't get drafted, but, you know, Seattle called and I went out there and, you know, and the rest was history when it comes to like, you know, proving myself after my first year in camp, you know, I decided to say, you know, I made a good decision of making that decision to go to Seattle just because Pete Carroll, me being a free agent, Pete Carroll, I made a decision that made sense. Like go to a school that Pete Carroll knew me coming from high school, recruited me from high school in the California area at SC, even though he didn't think I would be playing quarterback, he thought I would be playing receiver. I went to Florida, that's why I didn't go to SC. So, you know, I landed with Pete Carroll and after my first year in camp, he was, and he came up to me and John Snyder test today, he was like, we haven't seen nobody throw the ball like that since Aaron Rodgers. And, um, uh, um, <laughs> great, it's a grave compliment. Yeah, oh, and they shit. and they was you know really uh you know fond of you know like wow we found a dominant rough undrafted we got Pam and you know he's first round talent. And Hold on, so, say that again. Yeah, they, a diamond in the rough. They found a diamond in the rough. Like wow, we ain't got to pay him because he fell he's, into our lot and, and he's world. a he's he's a first round talent, but yeah. he 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 went undrafted. Like we got him for cheap. Mm. So you know that forced to cut you know, a veteran player that they decided they wanted to keep on the team because any guy that's coming in, you know, at the quarterback position, they could find a guy that can play that spot. Somebody's going. Somebody's got to go. Someone's got to go. Yeah. yeah. So they, you know, made that decision. And Who they cut? <laughs> they cut a lime in a guard or something like that. Uh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> now nah, I thought they had to remove the quarterback. Nah, 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 they wasn't cutting uh, at that time. It was uh, Russell. Ru- nah, it wasn't that. It was, it was uh, Tavares Jackson, and Charlie Whitehurst. So those had oh. two quarterbacks, and they had uh, mm. Matt Hasselback just left. So those two quarterbacks there. So I was a free agent at the time, and I just you know I was like that was my the time to like really make a real important decision of. Where the, my NFL future was going to be. Granted, I played four years there, and then you know played four years at, in the CFL and two years in the AFL. So I played all three levels. But you know that decision prepared me to have more years in the league and to continue to play my further career after the NFL. What if I made my decision to go play in like Chicago or something, or like go play in Miami, or you know some other destination spots that wanted me? You know maybe I wouldn't have got the fair shake. P. Carroll was a fair-minded guy, and I always believed when he was in college, he, he always let the best man win. He was always big on competition, and he was never scared to play his freshman players, too. That's what yeah. I loved about him. He yeah. was never scared to play them young boys, you know what I'm saying? And he always gave everybody that fair opportunity, and he was a firm believer in second chances. So that's why I made my decision, uh, free agent decision, to go to Seattle Seahawks. Smart, smart, yeah. smart. Shout out Pete Carroll. Some That's of that story. I, I, hey, Josh, I learned more and more. I'm, about I'm you every telling time. you, bro. <laughs> you burning the house down? Damn. Wow. Like we talk all the time. Yeah, yeah. Some things you, you just don't know. You just you don't know. know. Come on, man. What Come about on. you, though? Uh, free agent moment. Um, we'll talk about comedy. Um, so I came home from college. I tore my ACL in college. Uh, highly recruited. Uh, kick returner. It was in Hampton University. Um, around my redshirt junior year, I kind of lost the love for the game, and um, had this coach. I'm not, which I won't say his name. Me and him beef really badly. Uh, man, cut my season in half. I might have played two games, and then I just kind of lost. I kind of lost love for the game of football, and then I started doing stand up. A couple years go by. I come home, I end up graduating uh, with my master's in architecture, came home, and um, I was looking for a job, didn't find one, whatever. Fast forward, start doing comedy, I'm doing comedy. Um, at this point, I'm about 10 years into the game, right? I had been traveling all around the country. Um, I had driven up and down the road from New York to North Carolina, South Carolina, Philly, Jersey, uh, you name it on the East Coast, I've driven it. Um, at the time, I had a, a Nissan Honda, a, a Honda, a Honda. Uh, what was that? A Accord. I put four hundred thirty-five thousand miles on that damn car till it blew up. Mm. Damn. Bought it brand new. 
And um Shout out Honda. And yeah, that thing ran. Yeah. And um uh, so I fast forward ten years, um, I was in this movie called uh All In. Shouts out to Tressa Smallwood. Uh she said she met me, I was bartending. This was when I first came home, I was bartending. And uh she came into my bar, she said, I'm gonna put you in a movie. I'm like <laughs> Yeah, right, lady. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, we in right. DC. Ain't nobody right. put nobody in no movie. Nobody in damn movie. And um, fast forward, <laughs> I ran into her um, maybe like a year and a half later. She had produced her first movie. Um, I think it was called Secrets. After that, yeah. another movie and another movie. She finally put me in a movie called All In. So I'm in this movie with All In uh, with Lil Mama as the star, as the lead. And after that, we went on a press junket. So we on this press junket. It's gonna all make sense in a second. We on this press junket, and um, what's a press junket? So basically, when you go from different places and you're doing interviews, that's a press okay. junket. So we we uh, we went to to Bowie State, and we were there, and uh, we talked about the movie. So the movie, they screened the movie, and then we talked about it. And um, I met this guy, Harold Jackson. Um, could never forget Harold Jackson. So fast forward two weeks later, I meet with Harold. Um, Harold sits me down. We meet in the Bus Boys and Poets, and um, in Maryland, um, right off of Route One in Highsville. And we sit there and he's like, I wanna do your special. Now mind yeah. you, two years prior to this, I was trying to shoot my special myself. Trying to get the funding, trying to figure it out, asking everybody in the entertainment industry, all my big homies about how to shoot a special. Mm -hmm. So he comes to me, he says, I'm gonna shoot your special. I say, okay, um, when you wanna shoot it, right? And so now, mind you, I know that, you know, you got to usually take that, that material that you're going to shoot a special with on the road for a year. And you got to tour it. You got you to gotta test it. You got to battle test it. So he saw, saw some of my clips on YouTube. He said, man, I want to do the, and shoot the special of the material that you got right now. I said, ah, yeah, I, I don't know about that one, boss. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I like my new, my, my stuff, but I don't think it's special worthy. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like, I want to tell my story. I got a vision for, for this first one. And um, he said, well, I said, well, when you want to shoot? He goes, three weeks from now. I say, oh, mm. shit. Mm. <laughs> right? So now I got three weeks to figure out and put together this special. So I get a couple of my buddies together, um, my crew, and I say, yo, look, I got an opportunity of a lifetime to shoot this special. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't think if I'm ready. I don't know. But the only way I'm going to know is if I fuck it up. And right. I said, I'm not going to fuck it up. Mm. So we we sat around and I put an outline together of things that I wanted to talk about, like how I wanted the show to look. And then from there, I, I started writing jokes. I stayed up. I'm, I'm talking about within this three-week frame of time, I probably stayed up for a week and a half straight. Mm -hmm. I called every every single promoter that I knew or people that was booking shows on the East Coast. I called them top to bottom from New York all the way down to uh, Florida. And I, and I booked myself. And I literally... Started in New York, ended in Florida. I booked myself. And as mm -hmm. I'm riding, as we riding, I'm writing. I'm, I'm performing mm -hmm. and I'm writing this for a week and a half straight. Riding and writing, riding and writing, riding and writing. So finally we shoot on like February, I think it was like the 21st, something like that. We shoot, we shoot on the 21st, yep. Yeah? And 22nd. And so I had this shit together. I had, I had my set and I'm, I had it. And I was like, all right, I got it. I put it on my laptop. I'm walking into the venue. I'm studying my <clears throat> my my joint. Like I, like some of these jokes is like brand new. You know what right. I'm saying? Like I'm like, it's either gonna work or it ain't. Mm -hmm. right. And so it's brand new. Boom! I go in. Um, so we shot two shows. Um, we shot the first show. He was like, I need I need a clean one. Like everything you gonna say, you gotta get it perfect the first time. So mm -hmm. mind you, I'm memor I'm memorizing this shit mm. 30 minutes before I go on stage. It's an hour worth of shit now. Mm. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going in. I'm like, damn. Fuck it. I'm going to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, so right, I, right. I get it. Boom. So the first show, I shoot it clean. Right? No mistakes. No hiccups. I had to get it everything word for word, what I wanted to say on point. I had to shoot it right. I had to get it right. The second show, he said, you can relax. Let off a little bit. Mm. I let off the gas. Man, I have I had some of the most fun I ever had on stage. Mm. Right. And it came together. Fast forward. This is pre-pandemic. We shot it. Pandemic happens in March, in May. Yeah. May. Boom. 
Shut down. We shut down. So I'm like, yo, we had pitched it to networks and networks was interested, stuff like that. And I'm like, man, this joint gonna be a dub. Like it's it's not mm. even gonna it's not gonna see the light of day. So then he comes back and was like, yo, um, it's a dub. I mean, but we could potentially release it and do a self release on YouTube. I'm like, YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Like at that <laughs> point, I'm like, come on, right. man. Like, mm-hmm. it's gotta be an alternative option. Right. So he goes away two days later, comes back, is like, I gotta connect at Amazon. We could put it on Amazon. Now, mind you, this is before Amazon was giving deals, like they doing streaming deals and all that. Mm-hmm. Like we had entered into that whole world before streaming was a thing, before they started doing specials and all that. Mm. So I say, yo. Let's do it. Let's run it. We're going to run it through Amazon. Let's go. I said, everybody at home, we ain't got no other choice. Let's run it. Let's do it. So then he goes, all right, man, let's do it. We throw it up on Amazon. We wait for the approval to come back. Came back in like a week and a half. So then I say, look, we got to get us a publicist. We got to hire a publicist because we got to do some press. Like, I, I, we got to get the word out. I said, my, right. my Instagram is cool, but we need national press. Mm-hmm. We hire a publicist. Boom. First week, we do 15000 Ooh. I'm like, oh shit. Second week, another five. Third week, two. Week after that, two. Mm. Month after that, one. One, two. So I think now it's sitting at like 25,000. Or it might have been like at 25,000 at that time. So then they roll That's out and they big. do a, a comedy uh, uh, month. And I was top 10 on a comedy month. Shut up, Rob G. Y'all. You know what I'm saying? That's and big, so, yo. Appreciate That's it. Big. And, and, and it's crazy because. Dog, this was something that we did in two, we got the I got that thing together in three weeks. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't even ready, bro. And we wasn't even gonna release it. You know what I'm saying? For it to come out the way that it did, for it to be shot the way that it was shot. Like, you know, it ain't many people that know that story. Like how hard we were. Like, bro, I, I got pictures and videos on my phone, like awesome, you know what I'm saying? Kanye West, you know, documentary shit. I always wanted like, to ask you, bro. When you write a comedy set. Yeah. Do you test it out on anybody first before you go on most stage? Comics, with it? Most comics test they test their material in conversations. <laughs> okay. You see ever find I'm yourself saying. talking to see. a comic and you find yourself laughing? He uh. testing his material on your ass. It makes sense. Cause you gotta test it. The only way for me to test my material is is to, especially you know most comedians that have a conversational style mm-hmm. is to have it during conversations i might walk right. to josh and be like josh you ever seen a big girl with a fat ass and you and your boy looking around and see you seeing that ass <laughs> see right. i just i just that's one of my old bits i just threw one at, at him right just in conversation just so you could see it in you know what i mean live mm-hmm. and, and and see how with the right. reaction you see get with the reaction you want real you, reactions before you before you, you really put it on stage and test it and sometimes okay. you go up there on the stage and it's cold turkey or sometimes you're on stage and it just come to you i've been mm-hmm. on stage many times and i just write on the spot i'm like oh right. damn I'm gonna, right. <laughs> and i get to laughing you know <laughs> right. wait, 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 wait. let me tell let me tell it let me get it out you know what i'm saying right. and so you just never know man um it's just a it's a beautiful craft man it's, and once you tap into your funny you can never not see funny bro no question it's crazy like it'd be it'd be you know when comics say uh too soon you know that whole the whole yeah, thing yeah, too soon. Yeah. that's a comics thing because we yeah. all it's always a joke for comedians hanging around comedians it could be a tragedy you could have you could have got hit by a car i guarantee you one of them comedians got us got got something for you right. like man you ain't you ain't, <laughs> you ain't see that motherfucker? like it's yeah, always man. something and it's you know that's just a part of the craft man well, you gonna always offend somebody yeah, but yeah. shit you're right. Well, it's always something, and uh, yeah, and it's, it's always gonna be a free agent out there too. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I, I think that will uh, kind of uh, kind of wrap it up. Uh, you know, on that conversation, man, we we spit out a lot of interesting. Uh, oh yeah. Pinpointers right there, as you would say, different point of views right there on different levels of relationship, business, career paths, and just. You know the word being a free agent and you know what that inspires and how people been free agents in their past and what you've learned from from being a free agent and yeah. how you grow from it that's it's a beautiful thing uh yeah. but you know yeah. check us out man more contact coming to you more content coming to you excuse me i said contact more content uh coming to you uh check us out www.snstalk.net for all the latest episodes season one season two season three all major platforms spotify pandora 
um, you know, all the major uh, downloads, Spotify, Pandora, um, iHeartRadio, Apple, you know, check us out. We there live. Stay tuned. God bless. Peace and love. Peace and love. Yeah. <laughs>